On June 28, 1979, Dr. Nathan Sack of Columbus, Ohio, a well-known surgeon and his wife, had come to Atlanta for the annual convention of the Association of Nuclear Medicine. They were to be part of Atlanta's 131st homicide of 1979. Atlanta's catchphrase was that it was a city too busy to hate. Now it was beginning to have another name, the murder capital of the world. Park, Gable, and Vivian Lee to Sunday here around the corner. <laughs> well, there's a restaurant called Aunt Pity Pat's, but that's the closest you're going to get oh, to it. Maybe. Wait a minute. Uh, we'll give you everything. Uh, give me your rings, too. Give me your handbag. <laughs> Hurry up. Uh, Dr. Sachs' murder was on the front page of the Atlanta Daily Newspapers and prominent in newspapers all over the country. But a short time later, a crime happened that barely was mentioned in one of Atlanta's newspapers. In all likelihood, the boy was already dead when he was brought to this spot. He was 14 years old. The second boy, was last seen on his way to a skating rink. He too was 14 years old. This was the beginning of a case that was to be one of the most baffling in the crime annals of the United States. And before the ordeal had ended, a city would go crazy. And no one who touched the case in any way would ever be the same again. The Atlanta child murders had begun. You still have no clues in the death of Dr. Sachs? Our people on the force assure me that we can expect an arrest shortly. Do you realize the increase in homicides this year? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't, but I'm quite sure you do. We have had 231 homicides, a 61% increase over 1978. I hope you realize that when you print stories like that, how much you hurt Atlanta. One of our main sources of revenue is the convention trade. But how can we not print it, Mayor Jackson? Then print this. We are going to form a group of state troopers Georgia Bureau of Investigation people and Atlanta police into a flying squad to infiltrate the high crime areas of this city. How much does the tension between the white police and the black police hamper the efficiency of your force? It doesn't affect it at all. There's a great deal of talk that the white policemen aren't getting promotions they deserve and that black officers are getting positions of superiority over them. I'd like to talk about that if I may. I've read Atlanta papers all my life. They've been crime waves before. But I've never read this kind of criticism of our police force before. Why are you doing this? What are you intimating, Major? You know what I'm intimating. We now have a predominantly black administration in this city. Are you suggesting that our newspaper has a bias? Why don't you speak out about what happened during our predecessors' administrations? Why don't you write about how they used to treat black suspects? Why don't you write about how they used to treat black cops? You used to have to change the why, because they might be too sensitive to look at our black bodies and the corruption that was rampant. You didn't write about that, did you? 
Major, this is the highest crime rate that Atlanta has ever had. The city is 66% black, and we are going to have a proportionate number of black officers, whether you like it or not. They will make mistakes, but by the time we're through, we will have as good or better a police force as any in this country. Now, why don't you put that in your papers? At first, there seemed to be nothing out of the ordinary about it. My name is Ben Shelter. I'm a police detective. What were you doing here so early in the morning? The men come here and drink beer. They throw the cans out the window. I get paid by the load for those cans. That's all I got, except my old age money. A crook of that. What is it? All right, take it easy. Take it easy, take it easy. Pete, help her find her cans. I yeah. lost my yeah. What you got? Here's another one. You shoot a 14-year-old boy. You dump his body by the side of the road. Then you shoot another kid, and you dump his body less than 100 yards away. I mean, who are we dealing with here? You're assuming it's the same murderer. Well, what are the odds of two different murderers dropping two bodies less than 100 yards away from each other? Could it be a homosexual thing? No sign of homosexual activity. Drug connection? No, no indication of that either. Another thing, the place where the bodies was dumped, far from secluded. Kids go there to make out all the time. It's just yards from the road. Jake, it's almost as if somebody wanted those bodies found. You've been spending a lot of time on this. Well, I still got to talk to some of their friends, teachers. Ben, you were at the press conference Wednesday. Yeah, I was there. We got to make more progress on the cases we're getting the most heat from if this administration is going to have any credibility. I want all your time on the psych thing. You're the best man I got on this force. You know it, and I know it. What about these kids on Nisky Lake Road? We can get to somebody else to handle. But all the good ones are tied up on the same kind of thing. Cases of middle class victims that are drawing heat. You think we're the only ones that have this problem with the crime rate going up the way it is? You solve the cases with the most heat on them, then you go on from there. So we put everything we got into solving the sack case. Don't forget about Alfred Evans and Everett Hope Smith. Ben, just swing with me on this. You get the sack thing out the way, then I promise you, I'll back it to the limit. We'll launch a campaign against all the people that are preying on these kids. You know, Jake, it was a lot easier fighting the establishment than becoming it. On November 5, 1979, another boy was found. His name was Leroy Millard James. He was 14. He didn't want to go to school because his new shoes were tight and he was too embarrassed to wear his old sneakers. Sit down and give you dinner early. Yusuf! He ain't here. What do you mean he isn't here? He ain't come back from the store yet. Well, how long has he been gone? Must be more than two hours, isn't it? Jonathan, go and find him and bring him home. I put this on top of the stove. I told him to come right back. Check. 
What's the matter? Shut that thing off. Yusuf's gone. What do you mean, Yusuf's gone? I let him go down to the corner store. I mean, just to get a tin of snuff for Miss Pearl. Then he hasn't come back since. If it was one of the other kids, I wouldn't be so upset. But Yusuf's never done anything like this before. Well, you lost him. You find him. Don't talk to me like that. You just liberated woman. Think you can handle a job well, there at night and take care of three kids? Is it surprising you can't keep track of them? I keep track of them. Look, I'm a good mother. I'll find him. No, I don't need your help for anything. Nothing. How long has he been gone? He left here about 4 or 30. All right, I'll go look for him. Don't worry. What if he got hit by a car? We'd never know. He was just running around in a pair of shorts, no shirt, no shoes. How would anybody identify him? John! Don't worry. I'll be back with him. Did he ever complain about paying support? Do you know any husband that doesn't? Miss Bell, there are times when husbands don't like to pay support. They like to play games. What are you trying to say? Well, are you sure that your son just isn't with your husband? What would he be doing with my husband? I don't know. Maybe that's your husband's way of trying to scare you so that you won't ask for no more support. John wouldn't do that. He's not that kind Look, of man. Look, Miss Bell, now you said that Yusef's a good boy. Yeah. Well, he ain't likely to run away. No. Ain't nobody kidnapped a boy for ransom. That's a no. Look, we checked the hospital. We already checked him all. He's not with my husband. I'm telling you that. Well, will you take a polygraph test? What are you trying to say now? Are you trying to say that I did my baby some harm? I think we've gotten enough. Thank you, Mrs. Bell. When are you going to call me? This afternoon. It's the husband, Mike. You're sure of that, are you? What else could it be? I don't know. I never met the husband. I don't know what kind of man he is. Yeah, well, that's the only answer. So we're going to find him, bring him in, make him take a polygraph test, that's all. That'll tell a lot. What do you mean by that? I mean, I don't believe in polygraph tests. They're unreliable as hell. That's why the courts don't admit them as evidence. In case you haven't heard. Do you know where Yusef is? No. Did you cause Yusef to disappear? No. Did you kill your son, Mr. Bell? No. Sit quietly, Mr. Bell. The test is over. Well. There are significant signs in these last questions to indicate deception. Where's your son, Mr. Bell? I don't know! this chair. You know, he told me what to do with the drug problem. I have a feeling that one of these days that boy's going to be mayor. If he's not dead. Don't say that, Camille. We don't know anything yet. Can you help me? They got me working on other cases. Can't you do anything? Well, don't you think I've been trying? Don't you think I've done everything I can? I love that boy. I couldn't love him more if he were my own son. Ben, I can't get them to do anything. All they do is want to ask questions of him and John. They give us polygraph tests. They won't stop asking questions whether I was mistreating you, sir. 
Camille, I'm going to give you some advice. Now, if you tell anyone I did, I'll deny it. You still know some people in the media from the old days, don't you? Yes. Last Christmas, we had Camille Bell on our program with her son, who was a gifted student. He made a speech about what Christmas means to children. If you remember him, he was quite a remarkable boy. Now, her son is missing, and she's come to talk to us about it. When was the last time you saw your son, Miss Bell? Two weeks ago. What were the circumstances? He just went to do an errand, and he disappeared. And somebody must know something. A young boy just doesn't drop off the face of the earth. Are you satisfied so far with the efforts of the police to locate your son? I suppose I shouldn't say this. They're hard. Hard. Does he turn that up, please? You have a great deal of Atlanta out there. They want to know your feelings. Thank you. Well, I can't help wondering if they're working as hard as they would if it were a white child from a middle-class background. Chet Detlinger had a reputation in Atlanta of being one of the best men on the police force. His conflicts with the new administration had him out on the street. But in his heart, he would always be a cop. o'clock in the morning, man. What Look, you want? <clears throat> you can go like that if you want to. Why are we here? Trying to tell me this is Yusuf? This ain't Yusuf. Autopsy showed signs of strangulation, head injuries. I wish I'd had myself fixed so I couldn't have had kids. Would there have been a better chance of saving him if they'd done something right away? I don't know. Is there any connection with the other murders? I don't know. The way they treated John. Now they admit they don't have enough to arrest him. Well, there are two crimes done against us. First against you, Sid. Next against us. I don't know how. But I'm gonna make sure that everybody in the world knows what kind of place this is. This is a place where black babies are hunted down and killed like animals. Thank you. 
How long has she been here? A couple of hours. Maniac takes a chance. She raped? There's trauma in the pelvic area that shows that she was possibly sexually assaulted. My name is Camille Bell. I lost my child. You better close the casket. No, I want everybody to see it. I come to the city and seven weeks later my baby is missing. Raped and tied to a tree. I want everybody in Atlanta to see it. I want the casket open. What do you do if a stranger comes up to you and wants to touch you in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable? Uh, Patrick Balthazar. Depending on what he's touching. Somebody wants to touch your private parts or put his hands on you in a way that you know is wrong. What do you say? I say no. You do that, you like to draw back a nerve. But this person keeps on doing it. Then what do you say? I ain't around to say nothing. I'm two blocks away and still running. <laughs> Good. What do you say if somebody tells you to get into their car? They've got candy or pop or something good for you. JJ? I'm not getting in anybody's car. But this person tells you that your mother sent for you. What do you say? You say no. No. You absolutely do not get into any stranger's car. I don't care what they tell you. Do you all understand that? Yes. Christopher Richardson was on his way to the swimming pool. He was wearing his walking shorts because he didn't have enough money to buy bathing trunks. He never made it to the swimming pool. We have nothing on the boy missing from the swimming pool. He's been missing two weeks now. It's another murder. What makes you think it's another murder? We have four dead children. And now another one missing under mysterious circumstances. Don't you think it's about time we treated it as something out of the ordinary? Don't use that tone with me, Mike. I'd like to have Perry and Clark with me investigating this. Perry and Clark are busy on other things. As a matter of fact, you've got some things on your plate that haven't been cleared up yet. Tell him you've been investigating this. I've been telling him. Take it easy, Mike. Shella doesn't make the decisions around here. I do. You address your remarks to me. I've been talking to you for the last three months, but I'm not getting anywhere. I am your superior, and I will still make the decisions around here. It's a new regime now, Mike. Also, I imagine you find it a little difficult to take orders from a black man. There are kids being murdered all over the streets of Atlanta. But they don't matter because the department doesn't make any points if it solves their murders, does it? One more word like that, Mike, and I'm going to ask you for your badge. Well, you don't have to ask for it. Hey, hold on. Hold on, both of you. Jake, this is one of the best men we have left on the force. Mike, what's the matter with you? You've been a cop all your life. You know once you're on the outside, you're on the outside. You think you know how to run a department. Some of the best cops this department's ever had have been passed over for promotion by guys that have just become radio operators. Now I know there were abuses in the last administration, but you're not going to make up for it now at our expense. And I'm not going to be anybody's nigger. We'll survive without you. Jake, go ask him back. I'd rather turn him on badge. What if some of the other good white cops resign along with him? We'll ride it out. The press is going to go to Detlinger again now that Edwards has left. He'll make a few comments on his own. And his comments can be devastating. And he's a bigot, no matter what he says. I couldn't give a damn in hell if he's a bigot or not. Jake, somebody's got to stop these crimes against children. Or there's no telling where it will end. I wonder when the next kid's going to be killed. This afternoon? Tomorrow? Who knows? I feel sorry for the mother. 
They're going to a private investigator. They'll just take their money and do nothing. When I had a white administration, I always got in trouble because I was too sympathetic to blacks and their problems. Now that the black administration has taken over, I've become a symbol of a regime I hated. I was too black for the white administration. Now I'm too white for Walker and his boy. I can't say I blame him, though. You don't know how bad those old administration people treated black cops. That had nothing to do with you. You protested it. You're always in trouble because of it. Well, I'm in trouble now. What do I do with the rest of my life? Well, there's that post at the university teaching new recruits that they offered you. I can't see myself as a teacher. Well, I can. I think you make a damn good one. You always like telling people what to do. <laughs> I'm glad it happened. I think they were trying to make less of a man of you every day. You have to learn to get along with any establishment. God knows my daddy did it. What the hell's wrong with me, Mary? Why can't I just accept things the way they are? I like the fact you can't accept things the way they are. You determined to fail more than any man I ever met. That's what makes you so lovable. Nah, nah. <laughs> it's what's happening to those kids that's getting me. Well, if you feel so strongly, why don't you do something about it? What do you mean? I keep reading articles about the mothers, about how they feel that nothing is being done to solve the murders. Perry and Edwards have left the forest too, haven't they? Yeah. So why don't you join with them, investigate the murders, you could form your own agency. Where's your boyfriend? I don't know where he is. You resent Christopher? No. Did he hit him? No. I wouldn't have let anyone hit Christopher. Did Christopher run away from home? Now, why would he want to run away from home? Well, I don't see you shedding a tear. He's been missing for two days. What do you know about what I'm feeling, huh? You don't know a damn thing about what I'm feeling. We'd like you to take a polygraph. I have to go to work. I have children to feed. Well, you tell them you have to go to the police station. Oh, well, that'll make them feel better about me, huh? It's bad enough when y'all came and picked me up yesterday. They're thinking I killed my own son. Mrs. Cobb, you are under no obligation whatsoever to take a polygraph test. Can I uh, speak to you for a minute, Chet? What the hell are you trying to do? I'm representing some of the mothers of the victims. Represent them? How? Barry, Edwards, and I are working for them as investigators on our own. Some people stoop to anything to make money. It's a good thing you're not a man, Lieutenant, or you wouldn't be left standing. And not that it's any of your business, but just for the record, we are doing this gratis. Mm. Now, I know that when kids are murdered or missing, a lot of the times it is family related, but this is a special case and you're not gonna get any more out of her by putting her through all this. You don't know them the way I do. They have children like rabbits. They don't care what happens to them. Now, I know why the black administration of Atlanta act the way they do. There are still people on the force like you. You don't know her record. Two husbands in jail, a boyfriend that beats her that up. That does not mean that she hurt her own child or even that she isn't a good mother. Look, I'll handle this my way. Now, let's go take that polygraph test. You don't have to take a polygraph test. You don't even have to answer any more questions if you don't want to. Then I don't want to. Now, please get out of my house. You don't care if you ever work for the city again, do you, Chip? No, I burned all my bridges. But I tell you, it ain't a bad feeling. Have a good day, Lieutenant. You know something, Chet? I've been kicked around all my life, and I tell you, a lot of the woman in me has been used up. But if I feel like giving it all up to Jesus, I just think about Christopher. And that's the reason that I can go on for one more day.
You don't have to tell me that. I know that, but why don't you tell me? Oh, God. Who would want to hurt him? I mean, people hurt other people for money and for sex or for whatever, but this wasn't the boy who was into all of that. Can't you or nobody tell me why somebody would want to take him? Maybe hurt him? Jet Dettlinger. Dettlinger talked to every one of the parents and neighbors of the missing children that he could get hold of. I understand that a child from this address saw one of the victims being abducted. Is that true? A Mr. and Mrs. Rankin told him about a girl who was supposed to have seen one of the missing children get into a car with two men. Okay, thank you very much. Did you see Jeffrey struggling or fighting, trying to get away from these men? No. What did the men look like? They were black. One of them had a beard. Now, what time was this? It was after dinner. What, six, seven, eight? It was after seven. All right, then what happened? They drove away. Which way did they drive? That way. That way, huh? You lying to me? No, I saw them. All right, I want you to show me where you saw the car. Exactly where you saw it. What do you mean? I mean, I want you to walk over there now and show me the exact spot where you saw this car. Here? I told it to a couple of other policemen, but they didn't believe me. Yeah, well, I believe you. How come? Because this is the only place in the block where there's a street lamp. Mr. Dettinger, you have publicly disagreed with the Atlanta police force that there is no connection between the six murders of children that have happened in recent months. Yes, sir, that is correct. Why do you disagree? Well, sir, first of all, six children have died for no apparent reason. Now, usually when a child dies outside of natural causes, it's either family-related or it's an accident. But that has not been the case with any one of these six victims. Nobody knows why or how they died, and that in itself ties them all together. Is there anything else? Well, most of these kids were street smart. I mean, they were small, but they were tough. Yet there are no signs of a struggle found on any one of the bodies of the victims. It's almost as though they were somehow accomplices in their own murder. Is there any suggestion you would like to give to the Atlanta Police Department? Yes, sir, there is, if I may refer to this map that I have drawn up recently. Of course. Uh, these uh, little houses are where the victims lived, the circles are where they were last seen or where they disappeared from, and the crosses are where the bodies were found. And what is the significance of this? Well, the significance is obvious in that everything has happened on just these few streets, particularly here along Memorial Drive. All of the victims lived, disappeared from, and were found dead on just these 12 streets. And what are you saying to the police for? I am advising them, I am pleading with them to concentrate their efforts on this geographic pattern and to put stakeouts here, 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 and here in order to help prevent the next murder. It was the morning of Latonia Wilson's seventh birthday. As unbelievable as it may seem, somebody actually removed the window pane closest to the lock, reached through, opened the lock, then opened the door and stepped in. That person picked her out of her bed where she was sleeping next to her sister, then walked past her brother who was sleeping in the next bed and took her out of the house. Anything else? I thought it might have been some of her kin. If I'd known then what I know now, I would have yelled this roof down. I would have tried to stop him in some kind of way. What did he look like? He looked like a big black shadow. I could tell you it was a man. But that's all I can say. The disappearance of Latonia Wilson, taken out of her own home, drove Atlanta wild. 
No one knew what had happened to her or why. You know what you're doing by talking to the newspapers where you are. You're dumping on this black administration. That's what you're doing. You're playing right into the racist hands. You may not have everything in this administration that you would want, but you damn sure got a lot more than you had. We're not so sure of that. Don't talk to us about black or white. I don't give a damn if we got black, white, green, yellow, or polka dots sitting in here. All I want to know is when are you going to find my son? What do you want us to do? We want you to stop harassing the parents as if they were the murderers. And we want you to let this town know exactly what is happening. You're talking about it as though there was one killer and one reason. You sure there is? We have no reason to connect one of these murders to the others. Well, then give us an answer, please. My son has been missing for four weeks now. My baby's been gone for almost a year, and y'all don't know what happened. Look, you still haven't told us what you want us to do. We want you to take some of those men that you have on those task forces and assign them to find the killer of our children. You want us to make a statement that there's a Jack the Ripper killing the poor black children of Atlanta? Well, I don't believe that. And I'm not going to make this city more hysterical than it is by making them think there's some monster out of a great B movie killing all of them. We were more together when we fought against police dogs and stood up against water hoses. We got ourselves a black mayor. We got ourselves a black commissioner of public safety. Black councilmen. We got everything black from top to bottom. We got everything but protection for our black children. Our sons and daughters are missing from our homes. Nobody seems to be able to tell us where they are. If they can't find them, then we'll find them. I want to know how many of you people out there are going to come walking with me. Through the pile of woods and along the roadsides to search in the low gullies and up over the high hills. Who is with me? I don't like a large crowd like this going out into the hills and woods unsupervised. There are holes out there covered over by cut through vines they could fall into and get hurt. Why don't you tell them they can't go? We're going to be using different color armbands. The blues will take the hills, the reds take the woods, the pinks take the railroad tracks, and the whites can take the abandoned homes and the abandoned lots. If you see anything, blow your whistle. Maybe it'll do them some good. Let them work off some steam. Let them get a dose of what we've been going through. Mm. After about 15 minutes, the searchers found a child's blue jeans and a broken child-sized sandal under the bridge at the bottom of an incline. The searchers doubled and went over every inch of the incline. Some of the searchers found a freshly dug grave but inside was only a dead dog. Tony, what are you doing? Don't go away from everyone else. You're not supposed to go away from everyone else. Don't. What they had stumbled over was the remains of Latonia Wilson, who had disappeared on the morning of her seventh birthday. We want to congratulate the search group that found the remains of Latonia Wilson. They have given a new meaning to citizenship, not merely being passive, but contributing to the solving of these terrible murders. What are you going to do about the mayor? We are forming a special task force to deal with these dreadful crimes. Another task force. Who will head it? The same person who heads our overall public safety effort, Commissioner Lee Brown. Why have you decided to do it now? because the number of children who are now missing is more than is usual in this time period. You're now admitting the possibility there's one murderer stalking the children. There's still no direct evidence to connect the murders. But you haven't ruled it out, have you, Major? 
So we are not ruling anything out. But so far, there's no concrete evidence. Would there have been a children's task force created if it weren't for the Mother's Committee and the comments that Detlinger has been making to the media? What about that, sir? Mayor? It had no effect on this department whatsoever. Then, out of left field, the most incredible thing happened. A boiler exploded at a day camp that had absolutely nothing to do with the murders. Four children and a teacher were killed. The boiler explosion has nothing to do with the 12 missing and murdered children. You know, we got the same boilers in our daycare centers as the white people got in their daycare centers. How come ain't none of them boilers busted and killed none of them? How come ain't nobody dying that ain't black? Now listen, it was an accident. It overheated and the boiler exploded. It was an accident. Don't listen to him. Listen to me. If you want to kill off a race, the first thing you must do is kill the sea. The children are our sea. They are the promise of the future. Now, the whole thing here in Atlanta is the first step in a plan toward genocide. It is not the supernatural. And it's not the work of bigots. It was a rough spot in the boiler. It is the boiler. It's the man. The man standing right there reading his newspaper, laughing. And he's saying to the people of Atlanta, you think you've gone so far. Hate is the only reality. And that's why we black people have to protect ourselves. Well, he ain't gonna do it. The police ain't gonna do it. And the FBI certainly ain't gonna do it. We black people must do it. And we must stay right here so that not one more black child is hurt. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna be here 24 hours a day protecting my home. And who's ever with me, get your back. If you see anybody who ain't straight, ain't gonna be no ifs, ands, or buts. No way. We're gonna use these backs to cave in his skull. The boiler explosion turned the whole town upside down and made the murders of the Atlanta children a national story. All right, Chodo, hand over the rifle. I'm not handing over anything. That's right. Now, somebody got Bubba Duncan in the eight blocks between the school and his house right here. That's right. Uh -huh. He's probably dead this very minute. Yeah, no, no doubt he is. That. Don't make me tell you twice. Our black children are dying all over Atlanta, but everything is under control. Yeah, we'll get to that. Chief is about to make an arrest. Yeah. <laughs> Clifford Jones was strangled while collecting aluminum cans for pocket money. You could say he was killed for a penny a can. Well, look who they let out of the rabbit hutch. Now we really are in trouble. Oh, we may just pull the chestnuts out of the fire for all you street cops and get all the medals. Well, it will take more than a few pieces of lint to do it. Well, my pieces of lint, as you call them, are a hell of a lot more reliable than an eyewitness. Well, I wish I understood it all. See the stuff here? Now, this might have come from the clothes that the murderer was wearing. The guy you've been looking for for over a year now? Might have come from a, a doormat in front of his house, from the cover of a couch, from the, the floorboard of the car that he's driving. Barbers have density, texture, color. They tell you a story, if you know how to read them correctly. Yeah. Trouble is that only him and a few other guys over the lab know how to read it. I wouldn't want to put some guy in jail for the rest of his life and send him to the chair because of a few threads of cloth that I can't match myself. You're the kind of cop we're going to have to replace with automation one of these days? Yeah, sure. So what do you got in this case? What kind of lint? 
Dog hairs? Dog hairs? What kind of dog? Uh, Alaskan Husky, or Malamute. With us? Yeah. Get over to the kennel club, veterinarians. Get the names and addresses of everybody who's got a dog registered like that. Anything else? Wait a minute. What? Now, this fiber is very similar to some of the ones we found on the other body. It's a green carpet fiber. It's very unusual because a cross-section of the fiber shows a trilobular design with one short leg. Trilobular. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll still settle for fingerprints, motive, old-fashioned things like that. What do you want to bet when we find the murderer? He's got a green carpet in his house. They found two children on Red Wine Road. Now, they haven't identified them yet, but there is a possibility that one of them might be your son. What y'all doing? In a late development, one of the boys that was found this afternoon on Red Wine Road in DeKalb County has been identified as Christopher Richardson, the son of Selena <laughs> who lives at 624 Martin Luther. I'm so sorry, Ms. Cobb. Could you tell us how you feel? Anything, anything at all, ma'am. Get out! Get out! You don't have no more heart than the contraption you brought in here. What's your name? Now what I'm buying in my house, I'm just trying to show you what happened. Get out! Get out of my house! Come on, get out of here! Get out of here! Get out! Get out! Commissioner of DeKalb is critical of the way we're handling the case. Next day, one is best practical on his doorstep. You may have these people patrolling with baseball bats out of Techwood. Then the victim is taking out that project. Now, how do you like that for making us look like idiots, almost as though purposely? It's been almost a year now, Ben. We don't know much more now than we did at the beginning. If this is some kind of a genius... What are you trying to say, Jake? Could it be somebody in this department? It's occurred to me. If he's white, and I never believed it could be a black man, he would explain how he can get in some of these neighborhoods without attracting attention. If it were a person of authority, say a minister, or a postman, or a cop. Ben, could you check without causing too much of a stir on where members of this department were on the nights of those disappearances? I'll go further than that. I'll check on any rejected applicants just in case somebody bitter about being turned down for a job. I want you to put tapes in their cars. You mean you want me to bug our own people? Yes, I do. You'll have to get somebody else to do that, Jake. All right, then. I'll get somebody else. Sorry. This thing will work itself out. Sooner or later, he's going to stumble and fall on his behind. And when he does, we'll be there. Something's going to go wrong with him. He can't have all the luck. Well, he's not supernatural. He's not Merlin the Magician. He's not a demon. That's right, isn't it?
man them got Timmy, soon there ain't gonna be nobody to go to school. He's gonna get everybody. The man ain't gonna get me. Mama then sold a picture of Christ and a bleeding heart right here inside my shoe. My uncle say the man's got hands as big as a 12-inch ruler. He just wraps one hand around your neck and strangles you. It's like that. Could be somebody you know. Could even be somebody you don't know. Could be your cousin, your brother. Could even be your father. That's just what the TV say. It don't have to be so. I tell you one thing. Ain't nobody you hear me. Nobody will fool me, call me, or kill me. Or do the other thing to me. Somebody put their hand on you. You go as easy as anybody else. But what happens if a man come up on you in the alleyway at 12 midnight and ain't nobody else around? I know something. It ain't judo. It ain't karate. It's something else used by Bruce Lee in that last picture of his. It's called Taekwondo. Zip, zip, you did. Zip, 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 you did. Zip, 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 I turn around once more and all those cats are dead. Told you not to spend all our money on that last game. Now we gotta walk home. Now stop being a crybaby. What? That car's following us. It's your imagination. Let's turn in here and see if he still comes. Another one that phony call. Patrick Balthazar was found a month later behind an office building, killed by strangulation. just thinking. Mm. Might be too unpleasant out there for someone to be lying in wait to snatch some kid into a dark alley or behind a billboard. Ben, you've got to get some rest. You haven't really slept the night in weeks. I wake up feeling guilty that I have slept. <sighs> Who knows what might be happening out there in those streets. You've been a policeman for years. I've never seen anything get to you this way. I've never come up against anything like this before. But you act as though you're responsible for it. I just keep feeling like I should be doing more to help those kids out there. What are you talking about? For every kid you arrest that you think has potential, you go to the judge and plead not to send them away. I could have been one of those kids. So easily. Somebody could have come along in a car and said, here's two dollars, come with me. I would have gone. Jimmy Ray Payne had made two attempts to take his own life while in youth detention. His second attempt was almost successful. Jimmy, you're going to be getting out of here soon. I'd like to think you're going to make it. The thing is, don't let your life get lost because of useless bitterness. It was easy for a white middle-class psychiatrist to tell a young black who had no father and whose mother did not have the bus fare to come to visit him to keep his chin up. 
It was another thing to deal with the realities of everyday life, or how to get a job. It seemed for a while that Gloria Masters might be the ray of hope for Jimmy Ray. They met at a church picnic. Four days before he disappeared, Jimmy Ray Payne wrote Gloria a love letter. In the letter, he said, I don't have a job. It may take me time to find a job. If I had a job, I would try to give you what you want most in life. Why? Because I love you. By mid-March, the pattern of deaths changed again. Bodies were being dumped into the river. They were older. One was 13, five were in their 20s. Among them, Jimmy Ray Payne. How long was he in the water? There's no way we can know that. Yeah, well, he was killed in and out of the water. That's difficult to know, too, on a body so decomposed. No way of knowing anything. That's what's so frustrating about all this. So, do we put him on the task force list? Well, there is usually a pattern of hemorrhaging in the eyes and the heart and the lungs when there is smothering or strangulation. Nothing like that here. The body was clad in red bathing type shorts. Could have been drowning. But I think we have to mark this uh, mechanism unknown. Well, that's one you don't have to worry about. Uh. Say, look, fellas, I got other things to do. You kept me waiting here over an hour now. Read him his rights. My rights? Does it to let you know that anything you say may be held against you? You don't have to read me my rights. I've read them to enough people myself. What am I charged with, man? You're a suspect in the case of the missing and murdered children, Chad. Does Walker know about this? Walker doesn't have to know anything about this. Hey, figures. I know he got no part of this farce. Look, it's my opinion, and it's the opinion of a lot of guys in this department, that you know just too damn much about the case. You guys are serious, aren't you? Chet, we've been watching you for we a long time. Watching. Look, there's only one way that a white man just gonna walk into one of our neighborhoods and not even be noticed. What no. way is that? If he were a figure of authority, then that would explain a whole lot of things, wouldn't it? It would explain, for example, how come he wasn't noticed. It would explain how come a child just gonna get into a car and not even protest. It would explain how come there was no struggle. You see, a kid just isn't gonna expect a cop to kill him. This whole damn town's going insane. Oh, come on, Chet. You've been a little bit too bright. Okay, your maps, your predictions. See, the murders escaped arrest for a year and a half. A year and a half. Now, he had to know procedure. Oh, he's a genius. Just one thing, Lieutenant. What about a motive? Well, you always did hate taking orders from us, now, didn't you? You always felt that we were beneath you. So you wanted to embarrass this for us, right? Even if that absurdity were true, is that the best motive you can come up with? Well, it's better than some of the other ones we got. Look, Chet, we just want you to take a polygraph test in the next room. <laughs> that's all. You have about as much chance of getting me to take a polygraph test as a snowball in hell. Now, look, Chet, all we want to do is just ask you a couple questions there about a warrant your whereabouts for my arrest? when the kids... Is are there a warrant for my arrest? No, there is not. Well, then there's nothing but to stop me from leaving here right now. Wait, 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 stop stop me. You guys are so food. desperate for a suspect that it's affecting your faculties. And if I wasn't a veteran of 18 years on the police force, I'd be scared as hell right now because I know how easily a case can be made to work if there's a need for it. Look, I'm just warning you, Chet. You just stay out of our way. Get on out the case. The American Plasma Corporation was an institution where desperate men sold their blood for $30 a pint. 138. Mr. Cater, you've given your blood five times this month. How did that happen? I could take it. Okay, now you drink this. You can rest on the cot over there and then you go. I ain't gonna get my thirty dollars. No. And you shouldn't want me to take any more blood out of your body. 
In the American Plasma Corporation, Nathaniel Cater was just another number who gave blood. But to his family, he was someone who had lost his way, who might have been something else in another time and place. Don't try to pull them off me about contributions. Right here in this room, I see four doctors and four lawyers who could buy this hotel. Where's your name tag, sir? Your name tag? Are you gonna move? Well, now you see what happens when you don't contribute. <laughs> Pass the desk clerk down there and he said you ain't pay your half of the rent this week. Mm. Man, why you ain't pay your half this week? You had some money, I know. <coughs> I was counting on selling some blood. But when I went by there, they was closed. I stopped by my morning and sell a couple of pipes. Uh, sure. Man. Why you wake me up? When I don't want to wake up. You hear me? I don't want to wake up. Man, cry to somebody else. I don't want to hear it. I can't cut it no more, man. I can't cut it. I can't even stand the way I smell. Well, go on over to the sink and wash up. You'll feel better. I don't want to go over there. I don't want to look at my face in the mirror. I can't even stand and look at myself. How did I ever get here? Oh, Mama. Mama, how did I ever get here? Cater was going to become more important to Atlanta in his death than he ever dreamed that he could be in his life. Did the kids call? No. Why? I was supposed to pick them up and I had trouble with the car. When were you supposed to pick them up? More than an hour ago now. God, Robin, you know better. You don't think something happened, do you? Where were you supposed to pick them up? On a bench in front of the stadium. That night, I understood what the parents of Atlanta were going through. It wasn't only the fear that something might have happened to the children. It was the fear of the unknown, the fear of that terrible, crazy world out there. We had staked out bridges in DeKalb, Fulton, and Cobb counties. It seemed unlikely in the extreme that a murderer would throw a body off one of these bridges, particularly since it became public knowledge that we were staking them out. But no action seemed too desperate. There was no effort we weren't ready to try. Three o'clock. Let's get the hell out of here. No, you guys are supposed to be staying until four o'clock, and you're staying until four o'clock. It's scary as hell down here. All kinds of animals. And these beavers. I hate beavers. You get used to them. I'll never get used to them. I heard a splash. A loud splash. Is there a car on the bridge? I can't see it from where I'm at. That splash was to change the course of the Atlanta murders 
and perhaps American jurisprudence forever. Jacob, is there a car on the branch? Can you see anything? Yes, I see something. It's coming my way. Did it stop on the bridge, do you know? I don't know. It's moving awfully slow. Hold it. There's a car coming. Do you hear me? Yeah. Don't lose it. Okay. What's happening, Holden? What's happening? He's turning around. He's coming back. Don't lose it. Let's see your identification. Wayne Williams. That's right. Did you throw a body into the river? Are you crazy? Would you get out of the car, please? Come on. Come on. Get out. What is it? Come on. Let's step back Walk here, back will you, please? Here. Would you move back there? Had we come to the end of what we were looking for for two years? Was this the man who choked the life out of, shot, bludgeoned, and drowned 28 human beings? Or was it someone caught in the net of hysteria and the need to bring an end to Atlanta's nightmare? We're gonna take this on down the line. Who is it? They know? Wayne Williams. Wayne Williams? You know him? I thought everybody in Atlanta knew him. Seemed to me I'd known him all his life. Can you imagine a 14-year-old boy building a radio station in his own home with two other kids? The idea of a 14-year-old boy creating a radio station and treating some of the most important black people in the country. His picture was on the cover of Ebony Magazine with Roy Wilkins. Among the people that went to pose for pictures with this genius of a 14-year-old at his radio station was Andrew Young, the former ambassador to the United Nations and the man who was to be our next mayor. They moved to larger offices. His mother and father began pouring their savings into it. They purchased expensive first-class broadcast equipment on credit. Friends and relatives put in money too, but the novelty wore out. The shutdown of WRAC came the same year that Wayne graduated from high school. Next thing I knew, he was at the Atlanta passing out brochures. The brochure said, can you sing or play an instrument? If you're between the ages of 11 and 21 and would like to become an entertainer, you can apply. Well, where's Davey Brewer? Right here, further down the line. Okay. Uh, you don't want to sing the solo at Wheat Street Baptist Church on Sunday? That's me. Okay, now here, you take my car. I want you to come around to the Atlanta studio tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock and you sing the same thing that you sang on Sunday, all right? Uh, I ain't got no money for that stuff, man. Hey, now, who said anything about money? You got talent? I'll stake you. Hey, my brother can play the guitar really good. Stay right here. I'll go get it. Never give up, do you, Wayne? You used to have a radio station. Then you wanted to be a policeman. Then you wanted to be a newspaper reporter. What next? Well, you tell me, how does a poor black guy 20 get ahead? I mean, he can either punch his way through like Muhammad Ali, or he can become a stand-up comic who puts down whites like Richard Pryor, or he can sing a thing, right? Huh? So what's in it for you? Well, I'm going to manage it. See, now, we always been entertained, and it's always been others who have ripped us off. So what we're trying to create here, we're trying to create something homegrown, something that we have control over, and we get the dividends Mr. ourselves. Williams? This is my brother, Mr. Williams. You see, there's talent everywhere. Now someone had heard a splash on the Jackson Parkway Bridge. Wayne had been on it, and everybody was asking, was this the monster who strangled the life out of children of 7 and 9 and 11 
and threw adults into the Chattahoochee River? Was this the monster who plagued and tormented and savaged Atlanta? Ben, we're tired. We've been up all night. We'd like to go home now. I know. But I just want to get things straight, okay? But I talked to Gurley, one of the scuba divers. He said he found a safe, a Thompson submachine gun, a Checkmaster machine, and some assorted jewelry, but nobody. I talked to Ingrams, helicopter pilot. He made a search of the area. He said if there had been a body floating, he would have seen it. So I just want to get things straight, okay? Campbell. You heard a splash. I could have been a beaver. There are a lot of beavers around here. They splash their tails in the water. It could sound like a body. I know the difference between a beaver splashing his tail and the sound of a body. You do? How? I used to be a lifeguard. Did any of you actually see something being thrown off the bridge? I told you nobody saw that. Did anyone see the station wagon stop? I didn't see it, but I can tell Don't you. Don't give me butts. Did you see it stop? No, no one saw it stop. All right. Let me get this straight. We're saying that Williams took a body out of his car, carried it to this railing, and threw it off. Campbell heard a splash. He reported over the walkie-talkie to Gilliland. That's right. And you told Jacobs, is that right? Then Williams would have had to shut the tailgate of the car, get in the car, start the motor, turn on the headlights before Jacobs here, who had been alerted, could see him. That's right. Doesn't that bother you? Look, Ben, you aren't my superior. If there's going to be any more inquiries like this, why don't you do it with the head of my department? Listen, this little incident on the bridge here is going to be the talk of the town, the talk of the country. I just hope we're not starting an avalanche of something we can't stop based on a splash. Somebody throwing a body off a bridge that nobody had seen or nobody has found, and the murderer getting back into a station wagon that nobody saw stop. Both the FBI and the Atlanta police had men outside Wayne's house. If he went to visit friends, they were there. If he went to his recording studio, they were there. And their walkie-talkies boomed from their cars. Everybody in the neighborhood knew that there was something wrong. <sighs> what can you do, Wayne? I'll show you. Go with him. Wait a minute. Here he is. Maybe he thought he was playing Smokey and the Bandit. Two days later, we found a body in the Chattahoochee. Right away, there was speculation that it was the body that Wayne had thrown overboard. Asphyxiation, strangulation. You've been wiping the body went into the water. Could be two days, five days to a week. Two days? That's it. That's the body that Wayne Williams dumped into the Chattahoochee. Could a body get that decomposed in two days? The gas has caused the body to rise. Exposure to heat and sunlight makes it decompose very rapidly. Well, I've seen a lot of bodies in my time, but I've never seen one go that fast. The body turned out to be Nathaniel Cater, who sold his blood to make a living. Agent McGrath. 
what he wants. You've had a good time with us, Wayne, but the comedy is ended now. We have a body. One you dumped in the Chattahoochee. Now, I didn't dump anything, and you know it. Tell us about Cheryl Johnson, Wayne. Well, she said that she picked up one of my brochures and she wanted to audition. And uh, we made arrangements to meet at 7 o'clock that next morning. You were auditioning at 7 o'clock in the morning? Well, she had to go to work. Uh, that was the only time she could spend. Go on. Well, uh, I went by the Three Deuces to pick up some tapes, and uh, I didn't have anything else to do. I was near the area, so I took a drive around so I'd be able to find a place the next morning. Did you speak to her on the phone? No, no. The operator said uh, it was a wrong number. Uh, There's no Cheryl Johnson. Wayne, it wasn't a wrong number. There's no such number. We talked to the telephone security officer. Maybe I wrote down the digits wrong. Look, you got no warrant for my arrest. There is nothing to stop me from leaving here right now. Just a minute, Wayne. You know what this town been going through this past two years? Have to come getting outside this building right now. They know we're interrogating somebody in here. You innocent? Clear it up. The sooner the better. Have you ever experienced any personal relationships with partners of the same sex? No, I'm not homosexual. What about your feelings about children? Look, I like them. I don't feel any different about them than anybody else. Did you put Kata's body in the Chattahoochee River? No. What the hamburger and a shake, Wayne? Uh, no, no, thanks. Tell me, well, what do these lines read? Well, I have to advise you that it is my opinion that you have, in fact, caused the death of Nathaniel Cater on the night and early morning of May 21st to 22nd, 1981, and discarded Cater's body into the Chattahoochee River. Am I under arrest? No. Can I leave? Examination was given to you under your own free will. You can terminate it any time you choose. I failed the polygraph test, Danny. Why don't you ask me if I killed him? You got no more evidence against me than you do my son. I'm a little concerned about what's going to happen to Wayne once he leaves the building, Mr. Williams. So I'm going to suggest that we take him into protective custody. What do you say, son? I want to go home, Danny. Bob, find a hat from him somewhere. Something to cover his face. Well, how about this? How do I look? The whole thing was so bizarre that it made me wonder. I had known Wayne Williams most of his life. Watching him now, I wasn't sure that I knew him at all. On the floor. I came over the next morning, and I found what looked to be a minor rock concert. Crushed soft drink cans everywhere, fast food wrappers and pieces of hamburger on the lawn. I want to call a press conference. A New York newspaper had called him a monster. He was being widely talked about for killing 28 human beings in one of the most frightening string of murders that has ever happened in America. And he was inviting them to a press conference. He was passing out his resumes. I looked at it and couldn't believe my eyes. He listed himself as having had record deals with major record companies and having worked as manager for a local television station. I knew none of that was true. 
he was feeding himself to the wolves. I got a question. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry, but I can't hear you all the way. Uh, Ken, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Williams, why are you doing this? Uh, I want to clear the air. That's right. Okay, let's clear the air. What did right. you drop in the river? What did I drop in the river? Yeah. Nothing. Do you know any of the youngsters who have been slain or who are missing? Uh, no, I don't. You don't know any of them at all? No. Uh, why do you think the police are interested in you? Well, uh, they put a lot of federal money in this project. And the pressure is on them to get somebody. But I tell you, I don't really think that they got interested until they put a tail on me. Why would they be interested after that? Well, they had a, a little bit of an accident. What kind of an accident? Well, see, now, they've been following me everywhere, right? So I decided, hey, they want a car chase? Hey, I'm going to give it to them. What happened? <laughs> they re-ended each other. Huh. They re-ended each other? Yes, they did. You laugh when you talk about the police. Well, I tell you, Connie, if I had to make comparisons, I would compare the FBI to the Keystone Cops. And I would compare the Atlanta police to car 54, where are you? Did they give you a polygraph test? Three. How'd you do? I failed them. Oh, three? Yes, I did. There wasn't a judge in the country that would allow the results of a polygraph test to be told to a courtroom. But Wayne was telling it to the whole country, voluntarily. He needed a lawyer. He needed something. But none of these stalwart citizens were going to tell him. Now, you sound very confident, are you? Well, uh, I'm confidently scared. What do you yes, want? I, I mean, what, what do they have to do to make it up to you? Well, I tell you, I'm asking for a public apology from the FBI. I'm asking them to say without a doubt that they know this man is not a suspect. They know that I am not guilty, that I'm okay, I'm all right. That's what I'm asking for. Are there any more questions? You would hardly find anyone in Atlanta, black or white, to say a bad Mr. word Slayton. about District Attorney Lewis Slayton. He was one of the first officials in Atlanta to place blacks on his staff, long before the civil rights struggle. What about it? Is there going to be an arrest of Wayne Williams? We might be able to make out a pretty good case against him for lying, but uh, to prosecute a murder takes more than that. It takes hard evidence, and we don't have that kind of hard evidence as of yet. What kind of evidence you got? Well, we picked up some things from William's home and from his car. What things? Fibers, dog hairs, carpet samples, sweepings, clothing that some of our people think is uh, similar to those found on 10 or 11 other bodies. According to some man in the FBI and the police department, there's enough to make a case. <laughs> well, the FBI doesn't have to prosecute this case. They can go home and they can announce to everybody that they've solved the case, but I'm the one that's going to have to prosecute it, and I'm not going to do it, no matter what anybody says, until I'm convinced we have the evidence. Penelope Road was becoming more and more of a circus every day. When a face appeared at the window, the cameras rolled. When anyone left the house, questions were shouted. Wayne demanded the police and reporters disband and took them to court when they didn't. There were other high-speed chases. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, you all wait, want people. a story? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, would you follow me? began the damnedest procession that Atlanta has ever seen. And where did they end up? anymore. Well, what the hell you call that? Mayor Jackson! Mayor Jackson! Mayor Jackson, you come on out here and see what
what you done done! Yeah, what do you got? Look at this. Is there a dog around here? There's one in the yard. Larry. All right, let's not get too excited now. We've had false alarms before. See what you can find in the bedroom, all right? I'm gonna take this right down to the lab right now. Come on. Look at this. Green carpet, the trilobular fibers, and one short lobe. Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Atlanta Police Force, newspapers. And who has he got to protect him? Me. That isn't enough to make the old adrenaline go and feel alive again. Nothing is. This case is going to be to you like a jigsaw puzzle. Now, you're sure this approximates Payne's body? We're using the water for weight. I was very careful to make sure the specific gravities were the same. All right, now push him out. Western world is obsessed with child murders. Did he kill our children? Look, I'm not God. I don't have a pipeline in Dwayne Williams' mind. Did you experience any panic at any point? During what? At any point during the time you were killing these victims. No, I haven't killed anybody. 